Hi, I'm Liam Thorpe. And I'm Michael Mambo. And this is, is Team Talk. Hello ATV football fans and welcome to your second weekly episode of Team Talk. You lucky viewers have had two scoops of me and Mike so far this week. Yesterday was all about the Premier League, but today it's the all-important business end of the African Cup of Nations. First of all, we're going to talk about the quarter-finals that happened. Later in the show, we will be casting our eye to tomorrow's semi-finals. And, you know, it's all too soon going to be over, but we've enjoyed it. So let's look at the quarter-finals first. We had uh, Ghana versus Cape Verde, and we've got a little package to see what the fans made of that exciting quarter-final. So the Black Stars of Ghana have made it to the semi-finals of the African Cup of Nations after defeating Cape Verde in Port Elizabeth on Saturday. A 2-0 win was enough to give Ghanaian fans hope of winning the tournament for the first time since 1982. This is the time for Black Star to win this Nations Cup. This is our year! Hey, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been over 30 years. We have to win it. Yeah, we definitely have to win it. Cape Verde, for their part, have surprised many at this tournament, and they were very much in the game. With two goals, a penalty, and a breakaway goal from Mubarak Wakaso put the Black Stars just one win away from the final and sent their fans delirious. So I told them my friends. I told them very, very well. We are going to win the cup. We are going to win together. I like all of them. The goalkeeper, I like all of them. No way. I'm confident. I'm confident because previously, it seems we lack any But of late, it seems they're in the indefatigable indefat spirit. That has been infused into the team. We're glad it will carry us to the top. Standing in their way are Burkina Faso, who will be hoping to beat the current favourites on Wednesday evening and progress to the final. And there you have it. So, as usual in the ATV office is my resident football friend, Michael Mambo. Ghana there safely through to the quarter-final. Um, but Cape Verde have got a lot to be proud of, haven't they, for this tournament? Yeah, they've got a lot to be proud of. Nobody expected them to get to that stage and they, they really performed well. It wasn't, oh, you've said it there, it wasn't easy and there was stages in the game where they could have got something out of it. Yeah, there, there were stages but uh, Ghana proved to be too strong for them in the end. And uh, Ghana just hitting a bit of form when it's needed. How do you rate their chances of, of winning the whole thing? Well, they're very high considering the only obstacle they now face is probably Nigeria. Yeah, well that's not to give too much away from <laughs> the rest of the results we're going to discuss, but Ghana, uh, as we say, winning 2-0 there. They won their group, they're through to the semi-final. Things are looking good for the Black Stars. In the second uh, semi -final, uh, quarter final that we're going to talk about, and it was the hosts, South Africa. I think most people would probably agree that South Africa haven't been an impressive force in this tournament and perhaps sometimes the home fans have just urged them over the line. Well, they were up against Mali, who have been had a decent tournament um, and this one went down to the wire. It was one all, again, very closely fought contest with eventually Mali putting out the hosts on penalties. Mike, you said at the start you expected Mali to do well. Um, is this as far as they're going to get? Depends on, on that day. Uh, they're as good as any team out there and when they're performing they do actually uh, get on along well. Now we've not really discussed this but there, of course there are some very serious uh, events going on in Mali at the moment in terms of the French-led intervention. Um, will that have any effect on the players? I mean they're totally removed from it but obviously they'll have friends and family there. It, it does have an effect on the players because uh, each of them comes from different regions of the country and you, you're expected to perform as a professional uh, and in the meantime your folks or, or friends or somebody you know is uh, being slaughtered back home so uh, it says a lot about them as professionals being able to perform. Because I think a lot of people in, and, you know, in some cases rightly so think footballers are just sort of one-dimensional players, that's all they care about, but you know, they're human beings. Yeah, they're, they're human beings and uh, well, I admire them a lot for that because amid us all the chaos, at least uh, people back home in Mali can look forward to their team doing well, performing. It, it more or less like takes away the, the focus, the, the cruelties of the war. 
yeah. and they can enjoy the victory. And I think um, people are very quick to judge football as a business and as an industry, but that is a highlight there of, of how it can be a positive thing, isn't it? It is a highlight, especially when everything is going down for you. You need a team you can cheer, a team that can make you forget about your own problems. And just for those moments, it is a big relief. But speaking of problems on the pitch there, South Africa had their fair share. How have you assessed their overall performance as the host nation? Well, as the host nation, they did uh, well, considering uh, people rated them slightly. But should they have progressed further, or is this, as, is this as good as their squad should have gotten? Well, it's as good as their squad should have gotten them. Uh, they actually did well to get to that stage. If you watched all the previous matches, were rather dull and boring. OK, so fair result there, and Mali proceed to the semi-final. What about Togo? We've featured Togo quite a bit on this programme because they've never got out of the group stages before. Of course, they have a high-profile player that we like to focus on in England called Emmanuel Adebayo, and uh, they surprised everyone, really, by getting out of the group stages for the first time. So let's have a little look what happened after they progressed in the group stages when they met Burkina Faso. Overall, this has been a very positive tournament for a Togo side who have progressed from the group stages for the first time in their entire history. Their dream ended on Sunday after an extra time winner put Burkina Faso into the semi-finals for their first appearance at that stage of the tournament. The Togo players looked exhausted, they've given it everything, and their captain and talisman, Emmanuel Adebayor, explained that whilst he was disappointed, this was not the end of the line. Whenever my country need me, I will be, I will be up for it, because I started something, I have to finish it. And uh, we stop in the Qatar final, maybe next time we will be in the final and we will win it. So for me, it's never finished till, uh, till I have a chance to win something. I'm still, I think uh, we play against Burkina, we could have attacked a little bit more and uh, putting only me up front make it difficult for myself. But I think I have done my best and, and uh, physically, I'm, physically I'm exhausted. But you know, that's football and um, what else you want me to tell you? It's a, it's a tough one, it's a difficult one for all the players, for myself, for everyone, but life goes on. Well, sadly for Togo and for a lot of people because they provided a lot of entertainment, that was the end of the line, but it took a, a late winner from Burkina Faso. How have you... Have you been impressed with Togo? Yeah, I've been impressed with the overall play, but there's too much emphasis on Adebayo. That maybe took a lot of edge out of their game. And Burkina Faso, quick word for them. Again, another surprise team. When you see other teams who haven't made it this far, they deserve all the credit in the world, really, don't they? Yeah, I guess uh, the football has been revolutionised uh, with uh, Zambia winning the Africa Cup and uh, Chelsea winning the European Cup when everybody never expected them to do. So at, at the end of the day, it's, it's not about whether you have the best players in the world. It's how you perform on that day, how you defend and how you play as a team. And we know you love an underdog. Well, you must do, being an Arsenal fan. But uh, <laughs> are you going to wish Burkina Faso to win the tournament now? Well, I want the best team to win the tournament. The best, as you say, the best team on the day. The, the best team, not the best stars, the best uh, team to win. That, may, that could well be them, couldn't it? Definitely, it could well be them, but it's more or less likely looking to be like a Ghana trophy. OK, um, and you've noticed we haven't been talking about, until now, the former favourites, and that was, of course, the Ivory Coast. The Elephant, what is known as their golden generation, with the likes of Drogba, Torre brothers and uh, Javinio and many others, Solomon Kalou, they've very much been the nearly men of African football, coming close on a number of occasions and I'm afraid it was just not close enough for the last time and this could well be the last time we see that group of players together. They took on a Nigeria side who are also in transition and many expected the elephant to walk this one but Nigeria pulled it out of the bag on the day with a 2-1 win. Mike, you can't have seen that one coming. I can't have seen it, but uh, with all golden generations, uh, it's always the, the golden goose never lays a golden egg. Nicely said. Yeah. <laughs> I think we found that with England, with the, the Beckham, Gerard, Lampard generation. Is there too much pressure put on them because of that 
tag as a golden generation? I think the tag doesn't do them any justice. In fact, it works against them because the moment you become a high-profile player, everyone watches your move, how you play, and they, they, they more or less know everything about you. Whereas if you're the underdog, nobody pays attention to what you're doing. So you have that time where you can focus on just getting the job done. And the element of surprise. Exactly. Uh, speaking of surprises, we sat here and talked about Nigeria after their first game, I believe, was a, a very dull draw with Ethiopia. Yeah. We never expected them to get to the semi-final, but they, there's no reason why they can't now get to the final. They, they face Mali, and as you said, Mali will provide a stern test, but Nigeria under coach Stephen Crezzi, who, again, we didn't give them much chance because they're in that transitional phase, um, they might just go in and win this thing. If this is how bad uh, Nigeria was I have a lot of Nigerian friends and up to this win they didn't say anything about football <laughs> it's the moment they beat Ivory Coast that they started being loud and boyish and talking about oh the team is down well and stuff like that it shows if if they can be as shocked what more us watching from the outside yeah exactly so we're gonna have a quick look more in depth at those semi-finals now um, the first up being the Black Stars of Ghana against, as we've described them, the underdogs, but the, the surprise package of the tournament, Burkina Faso. How do you see this one playing out, Mike? It's, it's going to be a pretty close match, but I expect uh, Ghana to edge it. And why? What, what is it about Ghana that makes you think they'll, they'll win this game? Well, the, the young players, they're all very hungry to get to the top. Even though Burkina Faso has equally the same number of young, talented players, with, with Ghana they've got... Uh, They've been there to the final before and now they just want to win it. They, they've experienced that pain of losing so close to the end. You don't want to do that again, do you? No, you don't want. And we saw in the package there before, the, the Ghanaian fans, they are one of the most colourful and loud group of supporters. So will that give them that extra push? It will give them the extra push. When, uh, when it comes to football in Africa, it's, it's really more about colour, about culture, bringing everything into it. And one thing is for sure, if they head back to Accra with that trophy, they will be considered heroes, won't they? They will be considered uh, more than heroes, legends. Legends, wow. Yeah. Um, but don't write off Burkina Faso, they have looked very impressive and that should be a really interesting game on Wednesday. The second semi-final, of course, sees Mali take on Nigeria. Mali have been sort of slow but, but convincing throughout the tournament. Nigeria one minute they're playing terribly, one minute they're beating Ivory Coast. They, you don't know what to get with them, so expect a lot from this. Mike, your prediction for that one, you, you're sticking with your Mali, Mali <laughs> predictions. Well, you've backed them, haven't you? I've, I've backed them. I'd like to stick with my Mali predictions, but uh, my Nigerian friends won't forgive me for that. Nonetheless, I, I still feel Mali have done a lot and uh, need to actually get to that level. Whereas Nigeria, they've come out from the start and said, look, we're a team in transition. For a team in transition, then to go on and win the cup, uh, it's, it's more like an injustice. I, I would rather have a team that has been fighting hard for a long time to yeah. actually win it. And Mali, they don't make a big show, do they? They just quietly get on with their work and, and you know, they deserve credit for that. It, they deserve a lot of credit. In fact, the Nigerians should emulate what, the, what they're doing. Okay, so Mike thinks it's going to be a Mali Ghana final. I think I tend to agree with him, but the best thing about this tournament is you can't write any team off. So anything could happen on Wednesday. Remember to stay tuned to our ATV Facebook page if you can't catch the game because we will provide results, updates, all the gossip of everything that's going on. And uh, of course, that's what we think about the predictions, but we really want to know what you guys think. And we asked you today on Facebook for a few of you to tell us what you think the results are going to be. First off, we've got Lawal Hibukan. He says, similar to us on the Ghana front, he says Ghana are going to edge it 2-1 past Burkina Faso. But he disagrees with us on the second one. He thinks Nigeria, um, the former great Nigeria that is, uh, will re return to the pinnacle of African football with a 2-0 win over Mali. That would be an interesting one. Um, Richard Kawandera, he, uh, he neglected to give us a prediction for the Nigeria game but I thought I'd put this one in because he was the only person, I think, to say a convincing win for Burkina Faso. He said he's, they're going to surprise everyone. They're going to win 3-0 against Ghana. Mike, that's 
that would be a turn up for the books, wouldn't it? Three 0 to Burkina Faso. <laughs> well, it would. Uh, probably the the bookies would love that one. And the thing is, if if Nigeria can beat Ivory Coast, then then that anything can happen. So it's worth watching just to see. Well, the thing with Ivory Coast is they they were producing the results, but they were not playing well as a team. Yeah. But the difference with Ghana is they are playing as a team and they are fighting for each other. You see, when you look at the scores that Ivory Coast considered, some of them were very comical. Yeah, that's true. And you, you mentioned that both of these teams, Burkina Faso and Ghana, have hungry young players. Could the difference be that Ghana have a couple of older, more experienced players who've done it on a world stage and they can really teach the young ones? I, I wouldn't say older, more experienced, because if, if you really look at the team, who has that... Uh, well, I mean, I mean, like the likes of Asamoah Gyan, he's played in the Premier League, World Cup, you know, he can be the talisman. He, well, he's not, he's not really that old. <laughs> older, than, <laughs> older than the rest, I mean. Yeah, he, for sure, because he's, he's been at every other level, but at the same time, he's personally come out and say his mom has asked him not to take penalties and he won't take penalties, <laughs> you see. So it's not a matter of about how experienced you are, but on that day, how good are you? Who stands up and... Who, who, who stands up to be counted. Okay. Because um, we, we had uh, Didier Drogba, who's got tons and tons. In fact, if, if it was degrees, it would be a professor of experience. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Do you write these down before? You come? <laughs> uh, no, no. Honestly, no. it doesn't. It's just top of the head stuff. Um, our final prediction is from Lucky Mahemba, who uh, he says it's going to be Ghana 2, Burkina Faso 1. A lot of people are going for that result, which I think is fair because it's not a dominating when it's Ghana edging it. But he says it's going to be nil-nil between Nigeria and Mali. But when pressed on the issue, he says Nigeria to win it on penalties. Well, as we say, tune in to our Facebook page on Wednesday, uh, where we'll have all the updates of all the goals. And then on Thursday, we will have our usual team talk show to tell you about those semi-finals and look ahead to the 2013 African Cup of Nations final, which is on Sunday. Join us then. <laughs>